I reckon it's high time I had a word with y'all. With a heavy heart, I come before y'all to speak out against the uh, misguided ways of the LSPD when it comes to our sheriff's office. Okay. If you really wanted to play into this, we could start <laughs> pushing some propaganda on this upcoming election. Max is trying to defund the police. Times are tough, and you know, um, put pressure on new new mayor to be a big champion of the blue and support the PD in, in, in increasing the budget and getting speedy repairs. And I'll play the politics somehow, right? <laughs> I mean, I really, I, I really don't think that's, y'all think that's what he's trying to do? You think he's trying to, trying to, I, I don't know what it is with, with you and the mayor and his wife. You have some soft spot for him. No, what I'm saying. It's, it's something. I don't I, know what it is. Yeah, with because you, they actually you don't get see what done. they're doing. Because, yeah, uh, the no, no, only they, thing they, that they're they, getting they, done is lowering our PD, our PD budget and holding it over our head in traffic stops so they can try and get out of stuff. The guy is a tyrant, man. Oh, my Lord. You think because of a damn traffic stop? I think he's that petty. <laughs> I mean, he got that damn legislation passed. Oh, Cleese, I know what you're doing, okay? You're playing politics, which, oh, I, which I respect. Lord. All right? <laughs> I mean, how, how will lasso will happen, right? Yeah, oh. I mean, well, well, I'm, present, I'm presenting that today in like 30 minutes. Okay. Fuck it. Please, Cornwall is here to talk about something near and dear to his heart, something that he has been working on presumably for months now. <clears throat> okay. Please. Okay, here it is, chat. Cool. Okay. Why don't you read out this uh, letter of urgency? Now, a lot of this stuff was written in the past. A lot of it still stands, uh, basically. Long story short. I mean, shit, I'll just go over the whole damn thing. Yeah, just read it, bro. Oh, uh -huh. howdy, esteemed mayor and honorable members of the city council. As a proud son of the great state of Texas and a firm believer in the law of the land in our cherished city of Los Santos, I reckon it's high time I had a word with y'all. With a heavy heart, I come before y'all to speak out against the uh, misguided ways of the LSPD when it comes to our sheriff's office. Okay? Now, I know, listen up, there's been a whole heap of trouble brewing up in our neck of the woods up north. Okay? There's been crime running rampant through the uh, northern stretches, including regions around the Alamo Sea and the Polito Bay. And us uh, law-abiding folks find ourselves caught in the cross crossfire. Vulnerable to the whims of these no-good outlaws who, they, you know, they ride roughshod all over us, okay? They know full well that there ain't no sheriff in sight to keep them in check. So it's time that we took matters into our own hands and brought some semblance of law and order back to our community. Okay, so my plan is to establish a satellite operation. That's going to be the sheriff's office right up there in Sandy Shores. You know, I call it the Little Alamo. And that is going to be our first step toward reclaiming or safety and protecting our way of life. We want to bring justice to our doorstep, scare off them varmints, you know, round up the wrongdoers and ensure the safety of our kinfolk. All right, mark my words, the little Alamo ain't just a building, but it's going to be a beacon of hope for our community. A testament to our unwavering commitment to doing right by our neighbors. It's going to give our local lawmen the tools and the backbone that they need to stand tall and defend the good folks of the Alamo Sea area and beyond. I, mean, I ain't saying that it's going to be easy. But there, there's going to be some hurdles and challenges to face, but I reckon that we're up to the task. So I implore y'all, esteemed leaders to our great city, to stand with us in our fight for justice and lawfulness and make sure the little Alamo sees the light of day for the betterment of all of us. So in closing, I'd like to band together with grit and determination as we set on this noble mission to secure a brighter and safer future for our community. Together, we're going to stamp out the courage of, or the, excuse me, the scourge of scrime and pave the way for a Los Santos that we can all be proud to call home, you know, up there in Little Texas. So with the utmost respect, and the uh, steadiest of resolves it's, uh, from me, Cletus Cornwood, Esquire. Mm. Okay, que questions. Uh, how would you guys rate efficacy of the your guys' county patrol right now? Uh, for me, uh, it could be better. However, we release officers to go to certain areas within the city depending on numbers that are on duty. So if there are enough numbers to keep the actual uh, central of Los Santos under control, then we release people to Palito, uh, over to Cypress Flats, uh, up into Sandy, wherever needs our attention. The hot spots move all over the city for crime. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to say about the Little Alamo Sheriff's Office, Cletus Cornwood? I, I want to talk about the bullet points. Okay. I'll just go over the damn thing. How's that sound? Yeah, read it out loud. This is being recorded, by the way, for the, the people of Los Santos. If there's any, any any information that needs to be said out loud or that is on this that they can't see, then say it out loud. The next thing I want to talk about is the establishment of the Little Alamo Sheriff's Office. Now, as an active member of the community here and a very staunch advocate for public safety, myself, Cletus Cornwood Esquire, I'm fixing a pitch here this proposal. 
to, to advocate for the establishment of the, the Little Alamo Sheriff's Office in Sandy Shores. So there has been a uh, major, major amounts of criminal activities. We talked about the moonshine going up in the northern regions. Uh, there's also vehicle scrapping, you know, chop, chopping cars. There's there's uh, people robbing shit. Uh, there's illegal marijuana operations. There is all kinds of shit going on up there. And I think we should beef up the law enforcement in that area and, and really mm-hmm. treat that area um, as a forward operating base. Okay, we open up that sher- sheriff's office. We're going to rope in crime. We're going to protect citizens and ensure the safety and well-being of all the residents of Los Santos. So, these are the goals. We're going to kick off the renovations of the Little Alamo Sheriff's Office to give law enforcement the tools to operate and process individuals. So, what does this mean? This means that we need to give law enforcement the green light to park and fetch their police vehicles up there with the valet service. We got to give the law enforcement the chance to clock in, clock out of duty. That's something that's already available. We got to, you know, set up the damn, you know, microphone, all the information, the interrogation room, so it all works good. We got to give dispatch and other administrative positions there at the uh, at the sheriff's office the ability to do their job when they're needed up there. We gotta stock up the armory. We gotta set up our, our forensics lab so that we can swap for DNA and we can we can run that shit. We can put it in our serial number system if we're registering weapons so that we can safely operate from both inside and outside of the sheriff's office, okay? And we got to give the jail cells the capacity to hold more than one criminal at a time. I do think there's a little bit of uh, renovation that building needs. The building is gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I think there's a little bit of renovation that build needs that I can t- I expand on if y'all want me to, but there's some of that as well. Um, point two, we got to strengthen the collaboration and the coordination between the law enforcement there and the community to tackle the security concerns and to put in place some preventative measures. Presence is our first level of force. And if there ain't no presence, then people are criminals You're are going to feel now. like they can just do whatever the hell they want, not get in trouble. Uh, we got to deliver more prompt and efficient law enforcement services to folks and businesses in the northern regions, including Sandy Shores, Polito, and the surrounding areas. I mean, shit's happening up there. People got houses up there. I'm I'm damn sure. I know Mr. Simone, you live up in Polito. Siobhan, you live in uh, you live off of uh, Route 68 in Harmony. Yeah, interrupt. You know, mm-hmm. really if some shit happens anyway. at y'all's houses, then. Y'all are going to want to have law enforcement capable of being able to respond quickly. Not only that, but if some shit happens, they can find a suspect, take him to the sheriff's office, even if they're part of the LSD, LSPD or the sheriff's office, it don't matter. But that building is open and operational so that we can process folks up there instead of having to go all the way down to MRPD and then all the way back up, which then increases the wear and tear to our vehicles, increasing our costs, and it also reduces the amount of time that we're out there on patrol, which again reduces our presence, which again leads to more crime happening to good people of this city. It's all a snowball effect. A bunch of these little changes is going to help to strengthen the entire community, okay, and really focus on community policing by building a positive relationship between law enforcement and the residents there. That's going to promote trust, cooperation, there's going to be a mutual respect. So we need to go out there and let's roll out pro proactive strategies and initiatives to keep criminals on their toes. Okay, you want to beef up that patrol, you want to keep an eye on surveillance, and have targeted enforcement operations. So so being able to go up there, process a guy, send it back, uh, is, is way the hell, way the hell more efficient for everybody. We talked about folks living up there. Uh, I'm, I ain't gonna put words in y'all's mouths, but I think you'd probably be lying, Mr. Simone, if you didn't want to have a nice diner or some some restaurant, some some shit up there in Polito for you to be able to go and grab a bite to eat instead of having to come all the way down the city. Wait, well, uh, where, when... Hold on. Yeah. I think what Conrad was trying to say is that the increased police presence is going to uh, build up the community so that businesses will want to open there eventually. Correct me if I'm wrong, Conrad. Right. Yeah, exactly. Was that, was I, was that, was, was that, I mean, am I wrong here? Regardless of whenever shit does or doesn't happen, my point is, is that people need to feel safe, whether there's businesses up there or whether there's people living up there. I, I get this. I understand everything that is required and blah, blah, blah. This this whole idea of, of the sheriff's office open, it ain't some damn division where we're going to split our numbers in two or any of that. It is, let's open up the office. Let's have a sheriff's election. We can go, we, we can have a sheriff go open up that office and then they go through the process of let's get the uniform set up. Let's go through the building, you know, make, make a few touch-ups here and there if we need to. Go from there it's 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 not going to be like a hey overnight hey half the current pd is now part of the sheriff's office and half the current pd is a part of the lspd and now y'all only patrol here and y'all only patrol there that's some bullshit right i I think i think you know excuse my language but i I think it's pretty clear that that would be some bullshit and it it ain't gonna work that way i think what would work well is if we treat that building as a forward operating base and we are 
able to expand our presence up north, right? So it starts with the sheriff, and then that sheriff would work on transfer application and all that. That's more behind the scenes shit. I mean, I, I don't know if that's y'all want to hear all that now. Does uh, creating a new department even? I mean, is it necessary? Can't we just have the building be modified to accommodate what's necessary? I mean, aren't we still trying to uh, bolster? the the roster there there's two parts of this i, I think i think you make a really good point about mm -hmm. building a new department and you know moving away from the lspd and that's not necessarily what this is I, I i'm a big believer in having one unified police department that is you know this is this is one chain of command you know you, mm -hmm. you are going to have your sheriff and all that they're they're going to work in tandem they're going to work together they're not going to be you know i mean obviously well, you know, what, well what's the chain of command then yeah that's what i was wondering how would that break down for you? An officer in the LSPD would be like a deputy in the sheriff's office. You'd have the same sort of coincide yeah, in positions. Like, uh, would the right, sheriff be under how does the, the sheriff place? play in compared yeah. to the... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think the sheriff would probably be on the same level as the, as the chief of police. I mean, that, that shit, I'm not... I mean, I'm not 100%. Uh, so it's not a unified chain of command then. As... Well, no, they'd work together. Yeah, though. it wouldn't be... They'd work in tandem. And then eventually, I mean, this this is the whole thing. I mean, I think that, that if, if I have like a... Let's say a lieutenant. If I have a lieutenant that says something who's a part of the LSPD, like, hey, go do this thing, deputy so-and-so, then that deputy listen to that lieutenant in the LSPD. Uh, if there is an issue with an officer and then they have to be striked for it, right? They have to receive a DAP, a great word. That is something that somebody can push forward as a part of the LSPD. Now, I think all disciplinary action should be talked about amongst amongst the leadership and they should uh, they should approach the the punishment for that individual properly. But whether you're, you're LSPD command or BCSL command or LASL command or whatever the hell it's called, I mean, you're, you're still a part of the same chain of command. So if a deputy responds to a scene in the city okay. and an LSPD command deems it appropriate to discipline them, how does that work for the sheriff then? Does he just sit there and go, "Yep, sounds good"? Can, can, can you give me a? Can, can you expand on that? Just give me, give me like a scenario. Uh, one of your deputies, if you're the sheriff, let's say hypothetically, goes to a scene in the city, and right. then your deputy, you know, let's say executes a pit maneuver, and a command member on scene from the LSPD believes that it was uh, excessive and daps them. You, as the sheriff, disagree with that LSPD command member. How does that shake out? I mean, I, I don't think that command member should be uh, just putting the punishment forth right then and there. I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. I think I think the, the command member should uh, bring it up to the other leadership and say, hey, this happened. How do y'all want to approach this? And I, I do think if somebody is in the city doing some shit, I mean, it, it don't matter where you are. You're still, police, you're still a police officer. And whether you're a sheriff, whether you're in the sheriff's office or whether you're in the city, people still are going to look at you the same way. They, you know, they, hey, that guy's either part of the police department or he ain't when, whenever you're operating with folks in the city. It's all one chain of command. Cornwood, I'm going to, I'm going right. to, in all fairness, I don't think you answered that question. What, what would happen? Well, I mean, they'd be, they'd get in trouble for it. Yeah, but but who? You said one chain of command. So why does the LSPD command member need to talk to the sheriff's office? I mean, they would they would just they just take it up the chain. From what, yeah, what so, from so what I'm understanding, yeah, Cornwood what, what, is saying that basically the the command member who deems it inappropriate and worthy of punishment would then take it to all of command, who would then right. discuss it, and then they would. Uh, dole out the the punishment as agreed upon by all right so what happens if you and the chief disagree i mean in, in that scenario again these are these are things that like i'm not i'm not like hey we have to do this plan the exact way that i'm saying but what i believe is if if you have like a tiebreaker the tiebreaker would probably come down to be in the department i i also think i mean this is the original plan for how i wrote this thing out was under the assumption that we would probably end up having like a commission or something overseeing everything altogether. i, I want to do whatever's best for the, for the pd and whatever's best for the city so, uh, if sheriff is on the same level as chief of police, would they be enacted in the same way? Would it be names put forth for the federal government to decide? Is that your thought process? I think the sheriff. I think the sheriff should be, should be an election. I mean, that's uh, how they do I, it in most cities, but that's y'all's decision. That's just my my opinion. Don't matter on that. Uh, it it should be election. It, 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 it will be an election. Okay, so a sheriff is happening no matter if we open the office or not. Uh, yeah, be it of this uh, of, of the LASO or maybe the BCSO comes back or maybe the how did the I screw this up? Thoroughbred sheriff's office opens up. You know, eventually there will be a sheriff because there needs to be a. What, a what is so hard to understand about this county presence eventually? OK, we can't just have cops operating out of the, the city when there there is a rampant crime problem on 80 percent of the island that isn't the no, city. I mean, nobody's arguing that it's just we don't we're trying to understand why a, another department is necessary if the LSPD hasn't even been built up yet. Uh, a counterpoint. What does it matter? 
how do how does having two different apartments even affect anything? Again, it, it's not it's not another cause confusion. It's adding There's more cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. How? Isn't this uh, adding kitchens? Just it, like it, yeah, it's like literally just another kitchen. I mean, we could well, just open not up what's the building. Being described, right? Yeah, saying, it's all the same chain of command, so it's not adding kitchens. And well, I mean, it's, think of it as franchising. Discussion. You know, it's like you know, we, also, got McDonald's we need here to and franchise a police department that only a couple of weeks ago we were saying completely wasn't functional. And is the federal government okaying the uh, funding to make all of this happen, or are we are are y'all planning on fundraising to have all of that implemented? The locks I mean, were changed up there recently. I mean, really? the the building is it. it just need like that place needs like running water and internet and some shit. I mean, there, there's a few things that I would like to add up there. I, I can, I, I would love to expand on that if, if y'all want me to. But as far as money goes, just the bottom line is this: if if the the state doesn't want to help pay for it, I, I mean that's we 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 have a lot of other budgetary issues that, that Nakota can talk about. I think when Cornwood was ori originally working on this too was underneath the original iteration of the police continuity plan, which did envision a commissioner, right? Other right. than the chief of police. So I think that, uh, you know, obviously we need to be, it needs some adapting for the current status quo. We got two of the the most important people on the subject in the room right now. Fortunately, we got uh, we got Ruby York, Barrick Johnson. Uh, do you believe prepared. that your operations would be impacted negatively by the institution of another police department? Day to day basis, like operations, no. But from like a structural standpoint, I witnessed what happened years ago, and that is my only fear. Is what ha what happened years mm. ago? If there is not a strong enough foundation, and you rip away the pillars of said foundation, the whole thing is going to fall down. Who are the pillars? Who are you afraid of leaving the LSPD and? joining a new department. I mean, the reality how? is a lot of people will want to go. Why? Because a lot of people mm -hmm. would love to be up north. Like, it, it's just... It is a reality. Okay. The issue of, you know, who gets the final say in, you know, a dispute between a potential future sheriff and chief of police and they can't decide on something, blah, blah, blah. That's something that will have to be hammered up. But it, once again, it has no bearing on what Corner wanted to present to us. Uh, he's a cop. He's a guy. Uh, he's an old guy. This is his vision for what he could see operating in, out of, in and out of Sandy Shores. Uh, and I want to thank you for presenting this to us finally. Yeah. I mean, if you have more questions about, you know, the, the nitty gritty, just ask me and I can I can talk about it later. Will do. Thank yeah. you, Cletus. Mm. Thank you. But here's right. the thing, guys. Just the, the fact of the matter is this: just opening the office is boring, right? Like, like, like we need we need content. And if you just open the office without there being an election, without there being like storylines and people slowly, like that's just the truth. That's why I say we need to. We can't just open up the office.